Hi guys, it's Minx here. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to another installment of Sakura Dungeon. We just captured the warrior woman from this area, the tribes woman. I didn't record it because I was on autopilot just grinding my levels, but we're going to go back to town now, teleport back up, and we're going to um, meet the various people that we've uh, captured. I think we're fully up to date on captured monsters now with these three. Bare knuckle boxing used to be quite a spectacle in some human civilizations. From that tradition came many different fighting styles with your bare hands. But my favourite version, without a doubt, was boxing. And I know the gloves of the brawler anywhere I would see them. So I'm delighted to be meeting a proper brawler today. Greetings, brawler. I'm surprised that you recognise me. Where have you seen brawlers before? They're quite common in some places. Boxing is a popular sport beyond these lands. I'd recognise those movements anywhere. I'm glad to meet someone who appreciates it as a sport. She enters her stance, showing off a few jabs and rib shots. You're quite skilled, I can see that. Thanks, but I think that's why isn't why you came here. What do you want? Would you care to lend your fist to my cause? Sure. That was rather easy for a change. Hey, anyone who appreciates boxing? It's alright by me. So let's go. I need to get some practice in. That was easy. Now her. Seri seems to be particularly dis particularly dislike this monster, so I'm not sure it would be a good idea to put them in the same party. However, we need whatever allies we can get. Even spoiled monsters can be useful. Oh, finally! It's about time they sent someone to negotiate my release. Now then, what is it you could desire of me? Wealth? Connections? Perhaps some other desire you wish to be fulfilled? Provide you're willing to release me, I can provide you all of these things. I'm afraid that's not what I want. None of the things you listed. What are you, some kind of peasant? Do you not think you're too good for material wealth or something? I'm the one who owns the entire town, so I'm not lacking in material wealth. <sighs> Only a town. There's an entire dungeon down there owned by someone else. Alas, I'm still willing to negotiate with you. Generosity is one of my strong suits. Now I spent some time along with this gothic Lolita. I can understand why Seri finds them unbearable. I want you to work for me. You appear to be fairly strong, so I could use someone with your talents. <laughs> me? Work for a peasant like you? Honestly, your expectations are far more absurd than I was expecting. I refuse. Then you can stay here. I begin to walk away from the cell. Wait, where are you going? Get back here, a peasant like you isn't allowed to ignore me. She continues to yell as I walk away, getting more and more desperate. I'll come back in a few weeks if you feel like it. We'll see how you feel about it then. Alright, alright, I'll work for you, even if you are a peasant. Now that's what I wanted to hear. Kerry does not like anyone who uses stealth as a weapon. Assassins are her arch nemesis, and she seems to hold an equally low opinion of the prisoner I'm about to visit. Looking into the cell, I can see there's no one there. Nice try. I still know you're there. Dropping from the ceiling, the tribal warrior has the hilt of a dagger in her teeth. She quickly removes it. You sharp. I like that. And you're cunning. I also like that. Do not think I've given up on claiming my prey. All it will take is one unattentive guard for me to escape. You certainly are focused on your goals. So how would you like to work for a new dungeon, Lord? I work for no one. I only came to this dungeon because I heard there was worthy prey. Many members of my tribe came for the same reason. And no one's ever bothered to question why you're there? The rank of vile ones do not bother questioning anyone, and it's easy to avoid the overseers. I see. Well, if you work for me, I can promise you worthy prey. How worthy? The dungeon lord themselves. Now that is a prize worth claiming. She sheaths her knife. I shall aid you in your cause, for the sake of a worthy hunt. Fantastic. Let's get the ribbon outfit. Hello again, Isabella. We found the ribbons. Oh yes, I'll remember the ribbons. Another one of your personal favorites. You can't be serious about wearing ribbons, can you? Why not? There's nothing as alluring as hiding as little as possible. You have a filthy mind, Fox. Absolutely filthy. Seri looks down at herself. Wouldn't you like to see Yomi in those ribbons, though? N no! Well, that's too bad, then, because you're going to see it. And you'll see yourself in ribbons, too. Seri cowers underneath her. Okay, I, I guess I will, then. This is fucking ridiculous. Seri steps out. Slipping out, Terry seems the most uncomfortable in her ribbons. No matter which way she walks or tries to move, the ribbons become dangerously close to slipping out of place. So what do you think? I look down at myself, noticing my curves bulge under the ribbons. It is, quite frankly, perfect. And you, Seri? I, I hate it. Get it off. Now, now, try not to move too much. You may not like it if it slips out of place. Seri just stares down at herself. I don't like that outfit. Yomi can wear it for a bit, just because it's so ridiculous, but let's go for, um... I like this. Let's go back for that. Uh, okay, so, uh, anything else around town here? Have another browse through Charlotte's Curios. I guess we should. Well, the paint was certainly fun last time. Even if it was a cheap novelty, a little bit of creativity can certainly make life a lot more interesting. 
So what the curios can I find in Charlotte's shop? Naturally, Sari will be enjoying them with me too. Welcome back, me humble master. Always so formal, Charlotte. It's fine to call me by my name, you know? It simply does not feel right to me. So did you find the cheap thrill you're looking for with those ground seeds? Oh, I most certainly did. If only that you were there to see it. I'm certain I would have enjoyed it too. So what brings you back here? I'm looking for another interesting curio. Do you have anything that might suit my purposes? Just look for yourself. There are many items which produce novel but not particularly useful functions. Looking among the shelves, I can't help but notice a strange looking object which is at the back of the very shelf. Pulling it out, I look it all over. The only way I can describe it is some sort of box with round glass window embedded in its front. There's some sort of switch or pressable button on its top. Now what might this be, Charlotte? Huh. She walks over and takes the object from me, inspecting it closely. As far as I can remember, this object can create images of whatever it's pointed at. After pressing the switch on top, it'll flash and imprint the scene you see through the lens onto a sheet of paper. Which is then retrieved through a slot on the bottom, so it's a fucking camera. What an odd device. Humans make strange things, I agree. I think this device could not have been popular if the inventor I brought it off had not decided it was useless. I decided to look through the device's lens, as Charlotte calls it. Now why do you think he thinks it's useless? I can only think of a number of different uses with this. Inventors can be their own worst enemies, my humble master. Walking back in the inn, I immediately home in on Seri. She seems a little taken aback by how eagerly I approach her. What, what, what is it, Yomi? You look excited about something. I just found the most interesting device, Seri. Would you have to come and help me test it? No, this is probably something strange. Like what you did with the paint. You have my word, it's nothing like that, Seri. Get someone else to help you with it. But Seri, I've heard this device can help you become strong. H how would it do that, Yomi? It's an energy transfer. Through bursts of light, it absorbs energy from ambient at atmosphere and directs it into whoever is caught in the flash. Really? That would mean... Seri's face seems to light up. But how would I know if it works or not? Just trust me on this. Or do I have to recite the eldritch mathematics by which the machine functions? No, no, th that isn't necessary. Oh, by the way, for it best to work, you need to wear a certain type of clothes to fully absorb the energy. But what kind of clothes would these be? Sarah looks uncomfortable <laughs> in her bondage outfit. I don't like the way the material rubs up against me. Are you sure this is necessary, Yomi? Of course it's necessary. Why else would I mention it in the first place? Well, just never mind. Alright, do you have your sword? R right here. Do the pose I showed you. Like this? Sari gets on her knees and leans on her sword. Despite how embarrassed she is, she manages to put on a cool expression. She looks towards the device with a certain confidence. Try moving your hands a little bit more up the shaft. She complies, moving them ever so slightly. Maybe you could lean a bit more on the sword? The device seems to require really specific situations to work. How is this more effective than just training? Well, tell me, is it harder to train or harder to stand still in a certain way? You have a fair point. Perhaps this device can finally grant me some strength, able to fight on my own. She leans more on the sword, her eyes still focused on the lens. Perfect, let me take a photo. The device flashes, the strange machine inside it whirling. Did it work? It seems like it has, but I do not feel any stronger. Let's try again. This time, stick your chest out more. Look like a true heroine. I do not think heroines stick out their chests, but it will make the device work better. She sticks her chest out, causing a notable shake with the sudden motion. Perfect. The device worked excellently that time. I'm still not feeling any noticeable difference. Such things can be subtle, Sari. Do you check in to see if you're stronger after a hard day of training? Do you check to see if you're stronger after a hard day of training? The way this device works is no different. Right, that would make sense. Another flash bursts into the room, fully illuminating Sari's scantily clad figure. Watching the shining material rub against her every time she moves, it is glorious. You have that look on your face, Yomi. What are you talking about? That devious little smile. I was just thinking about how lovely you look in that pose. What does that have to do with the device? Well, the pose is very important to the device's functions. But admiring like you like this is also very nice. Let's just get this over with. I'd rather just go and train than use this thing again. <laughs> that was good. Well, that was fun. And the device made some interesting looking pictures. I think I'll keep these to myself, however. Charlotte notices me and heads back over. Did the device work? Oh yes, it worked magnificently. Really? Can I see the pictures you made with it? I'm afraid not. Oh well, I understand. Either way, I hope it was a nice novelty. It was, Charlotte. It really was. What a fucking perv Yomi is. Holy fucking shit. Anything here? Nope. I guess we're going back to the dungeon. 
I'll see you when I finally get the better of these bosses, guys. They're both proving to be a real challenge. I need to do some more grinding. So I'll see you then. So this fight does seem to be going a little easier than it did before. Finally, she's so close to it. So close. Sylvie flowed as well, that's awesome. We might have got this. Of course, I miss at the crucial moment. At the moment where I could have possibly won, and now she gets all her fucking health back. It's fucking ridiculous. So close, so close. Please do her. Yes! Finally! It's taken so long, guys. Defeated the sand girl lies on her back. Now then, care to explain what this place is? It isn't my home. Oh, so you don't know anything about it? It was only sand in the oasis. Nothing more. Don't know what's wrong with my- I don't even know what accent that was. My my, it sounds like you had a very little experience outside this world. And you drive out every visitor? I... This is like my domain. I have to protect it. Have you thought about why you have to protect it? Her face goes blank. What are you doing, Yomi? Why are you asking her these questions? She was placed here as a sentinel of some sort. The entire desert is someone's dream crafted into reality. Such a thing is possible? Some wizards and mages have become powerful enough to make worlds of their own. Tiny reality slices like this aren't uncommon. Her master, whoever they were, has long since left this place behind. And she's not questioned why she's here at all. I don't know if she was made or if she's an actual monster, but I have no intention of leaving for here for her here for any longer. Right. Well, if you think it's the right thing to do, then do it. I offer my hand to her. Would you like to come with me? But I, I can't leave this place. I can arrange something with you. You can stay here until I need you. I flick my fingers and make a few magical sparks fly through the air. A simple teleportation spell. Don't you want to see the world outside? Hesitantly, she reaches for my hand and firmly clasps it. Excellent! Now we go, we recruited the Sand Sentinel. Right, now we got a fucking angel of beat on this floor still, which is uh, probably going to be, I would say, the harder of the fights. It seems now, though, we're within a certain level range. Things are going to get easier, which at least is something, because up until this point, it's been pretty bullshit. Let's see how this fight goes. The problem with the angel is it flies, which means a lot of the hits automatically miss. I shouldn't have used Holy Well, that was a really bad idea. Yeah. Holy shit, guys, well done, you fucking dodged that. And we hit with a sword attack. Oh, well done! Holy shit, we've ripped her clothes! We've actually got a fighting chance here. Uh... Don't fuck up now, come on. Yes, another hit. Good hits, too. Fuck! Flo that's what I mean, that's the floating bollocks. That's the bollocks, that is the real bollocks. You stop dodging all my attacks, please. Sylvie's panicked as well. What a fucking idiot. And she's about to flow. Any second now, she's going to flow. Oh, this is so fucking close. Oh my god, three health. Three fucking health. She's going to kill Sylvie. She flowed. She flowed. We're fucked. Holy shit, we, we kept her health down, we kept her health down. Got so close to death. Please kill! Yes! You found a hundred shards. The angel falls to the floor, the last of her strength spent. How? I was appointed by the gods to guard this terrible treasure. How was I defeated? Never underestimate your opponents. No matter what purpose you have or what strength you have, there's always someone stronger out there. Seri seems to feel guilty. Should you really have done that? She's an angel after all. And there must be a good reason why she was protecting this artifact. That is a void leaking into this world. If you touch it, it will drag you in itself. With no furthermore at all, I pick up the object from the altar. No, what have you done? It's too late for you now. We wait for a few moments expecting something to happen. The angel stares at the artifact. You, you should be drawn into the void by now. Could it be you can control it? Well, it's similar to using a warp stone. This object obviously has much stronger pull than warp stones, but in my current state, it's no problem. I casually hide the object in my kimono. What? What are you? No mortal being could ever hope to control it. I'm just a fox spirit. No one particularly special. The angel struggles up onto her feet. Even so, I can't take any risks. I know I cannot beat you, but would you allow me to accompany you? 
So I might ensure the artifact does no harm? Oh, an intriguing offer. But you'll have to help me with my quest as well. I will. Anything to keep this world safe from its power. Excellent! To think now we have an angel on our side! What interesting adventure this has become. Okay. We've got so much shit to do now, guys. This floor is clear. 100%, which is fantastic. Let's go back to town. I need to organise my party. Because the assassin, the queen bee, and... Don't really have a place here, do they? At all, in the party. Sorry, guys, but you don't. That's level 49. Well, I guess we'll uh, bring the Angel and Sand Sentinel. They can come along as the extra NPCs. They're higher level than my other characters right now, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, and then organize. Apparently I did something, I don't know. I did the wrong thing. I mean, get in the fucking pie. There we go. Perfect. The perfect lineup. Everything looks good at the moment. Um, nothing around town? Okay, so we're going to go back straight into the dungeon. Um, I'm going to talk to Anubis, because I think Anubis will join us after we cleared a certain amount of floors. So we went in there, Anubis absolutely destroyed us in a fight, and uh, as a result she isn't in the party yet. Hopefully she will be eventually, but I'm going to have to level up a bit more. And for now, we're going to just continue um, to a new area. I think that's the plan here. Go somewhere new, like this door here that should be open up now. Yep. The door's open, Yemi. Then what are we waiting for? Although adversity waits ahead, I'm sure we'll do just fine. I feel it. I feel the abyss tearing through our world. The power pulsing through the darkest depths. Seri, we're almost at the end. Really? We're near the end now? Yes, although these halls are no longer familiar to me, I can tell that we're near the end of this dungeon. The dungeon lord has to be used the abyss to increase our own power. What madness could have possessed someone to do this, I'll never know. Seri lets out a weary sigh. I'm tired, Jemmy. It's been such a long journey together. We've done so many things, seen so many things. Despite the rocky start we had, I don't regret anything that has happened. So I would like to say thank you for joining me on this insane quest. Do not give up now. I'm watching over you. If you're tired, then I have a shoulder for you to lean on. The jewel angel simply looks back at us. Truly, your journey has been long. There is a few steps to go. I'll be right here with you as you take them. Sylvia leans against the wall. I long for the sights and sounds of home. Though it's been a lot good to see you again, Yomi. Journey has taken it out of me too. She didn't seem too hot-blooded as she did when we first arrived here. Now she just looks weary. The longest of campaigns and adventures usually end with the best conclusions. There'll be ale, warm meals, and celebrations waiting for us at the end of this. Though I had my doubts about monsters, I can say all of you are my comrades. You're making it sound like things are going to be over after this. Well, what else is there to do when this adventure's over? We could always go on another adventure together. Give me some time to think about it. For now, we should keep this dungeon, not keep the dungeon lord waiting. The abyss won't be enough to save them from us. We are very close to the end, guys. Like, aside from... I believe there's, like, a UFO section as well, like, for the aliens and things, which I, I guess I'll do too. But, like, in general, I think we're quite away, quite close to the conclusion. Maybe, like, three or four floors, I think? It's quite exciting. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, it is pretty, uh, pretty tense. But I'm excited to see what happens. I really am. I guess we're going to just have to find out what happens and uh, how things are going to turn out. Let's continue, shall we? Let's fucking continue. I'll come back for Anubis in a bit. Obviously, there's a teleporter right by her room, so that's not a big deal. It's like pretty easy to, you know, go in there and, and grab her when I'm a high enough level. Sudden cracking sounds make Seri jump. What was that? It's the whip cracker. Oh, I think I know what that is. So I need to train you then. Go to light girls who are already obedient. The whip wielder snaps it again. Another one of these vulgar monsters. Don't be rude, it's actually a warrior spirit. Seriously? Yeah, she embodies passion. Though it seems her passion extends to do more than battle. One must never limit themselves to merely one pleasure. Whether I strike you in battle or another, more intimate situation. It's all very thrilling. Could die really easily, I assume, this thing. There you go. Not too long and we can capture those as well. This f I think we over-leveled a bit on the previous floor in the end. Like, I don't think this is going to be much of a challenge. But that's good, because I could really do with not too much of a challenge at this point. I'm just going to go and check out. There's obviously a room down there that I missed. I want to clean out all this, this floor as well, because it's not one of the ones with like bullshit fucking traps and stuff, it looks like, at least. 
Lunge Vitality Seed is kind of handy. A strange looking woman appears in front of us. Seri immediately tenses up. Oh my god. Stop doing the fucking... Is this a goat? Yes, but... As you can see, the Abyss has made some noticeable changes. One very noticeable effort is a dramatic increase in intelligence. Normally, goats are not very bright, even if they're monsters. Please, don't analyse me as though I'm a mere beast. But you're correct in your observation. I've been granted newfound intellect. Unfortunately, I'm obliged to stop you here and now. Peering through us with her spectacles, the goat seems to smile as you see Seri. A human? We've been looking for one of these for tw on the 22nd floor. For what purpose? There's a room there. We host private orgies at times, but things need some spicing up. Holy fucking shit. That room is uh, there. I haven't been there yet. And I obviously probably can't show it on camera, but yeah, you know. Can we just please fight? I don't want to talk about orgies. Very well. It's only level 15. There you go. I'll be visiting that room for research purposes later on. Just just for research, guys, you know. And you understand that, right? Right, guys? Right? So, guys, I know for a fact there is a secret door here as you go through, and in this chest is a dragon's gift, so we can free the dragon now. Hey, Yomi, do you remember what the Ryu on the 16th floor? She mentioned she was trapped and needed something to escape, right? That's correct. I think I found the keys to her freedom. The object's an impressive one. A dragon spiraling around a golden pillar with a single gem placed into its mouth. What is this gem? It does not look normal. Staring to the gem's red depths, I can see a small flicker of power inside. I think it's a piece of the Ryu's soul. The artifact has a binding enchantment placed on it. I'm still not sure if we should release the Ryu or not. We're starting to get pretty tough down here, so maybe we should take the risk. I'll take responsibility for whatever happens, Seri. So do not worry. So we're going to go and free her eventually as well. I'm going to keep going on this floor for now. But, um, you know. In the shadows of the pyramid, we see two shapes before us. Seri raises a torch to illuminate the darkness. What the fuck are these? Two women kneel on the floor, looking only at each other. It's sure been boring down here. When's the last time we actually got into a decent fight? Sarah just looks at them with disgust. What inappropriate outfits. Loose bits of leather, metal and cloth hang off their bodies. The only noticeable clothing they have are their hoods. Both of them look fairly preoccupied. For only a few seconds later, they finally bother to look at us. Oh. What is this? It seems we found intruders. Ho ho ho! Do you want to deal with them, Ella? No, they look like a waste of time. You can deal with them if you like, Emma. I do not care. Sure. Why not? They feel odd. I'm not sure how, exactly. I feel abyssal energy is permeating them. We must not underestimate these two. For the darkness empowers them both. Yami, you look really nervous. Is there something unusual about these two? To say the least. What are they? Monsters? I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter either way. I'm sure we can beat them. So, who are you meant to be? Some sort of foolhardy group of adventurers or something? We're not exactly adventurers. We're monsters, after all. Monsters, humans, you all look the same to me. So you're neither a monster or a human. Yomi, what is she then? I can only become grim-faced. Yomi? Come on, you know, right? Hey, I don't really like being ignored. You came down here looking for a fight, right? More or less, I suppose. We have no particular quarrel with you, however. For it's the dungeon lord we wish to confront. Alright. You see, that's a problem for me. She's kind of our boss at the moment. Isn't that right, Ella? Yes. A few awkward moments pass before we realise that she's all going to say. Don't mind her. She's never been one for conversation. The intruders are boring. Are you going to deal with them or not? You really need to be more social, Ella. You actually need to do your job, Emma. Dungeon Lord will be mad if we don't do anything about them. Right, right. Go ahead, then. It shouldn't last long. Very well. If I can take a couple of hits, make sure you don't finish them off. You haven't had a worthy foe in some time. No problem, but I doubt that's going to happen. The twin to our left begins to get off her knees. So this is going to be like a proper fucking difficult fight, right? Mind playing with me for a bit? Ella, as she was called, walks off down one of the hallways. Emma simply looks at us with a wicked smile on her face. She takes out a sharpening stone and begins to grind the edge of her axe. Till it practically gleams in the torchlight. She taps its edge with her finger. Just right! She licks one side of her axe. Ready? I promise it'll be fun. I was not expecting an abyssal to be here, let alone a reaper. A, a reaper? Aren't they only myths, though? Oh, so you know what I am. That's not going to matter in a few minutes. She brings out her axe and brings it down an overhead arc. 
We dodge it, but the sheer force of a blow completely smashes the ground where we were standing. Damn. So strong. So you go to that much effort to sharpen it and use it as a blunt weapon? Well, if you'd not been rude and dodged that attack, it would have been worked perfectly fine as a sharp weapon! Jesus Christ. She's level 53, which is, uh, pretty high. Um, not insurmountable, I feel, but certainly could be a problem. We'll see how badly this goes. I mean, I'm assuming we have to fight both of them later on. Okay, obviously holy stuff is doing a good job. Um, yeah, she's going to dodge those repeatedly, isn't she? Holy arrows, please do something. Fuck. That fucking bullshit fucking dodging is... It annoys me so much, it really does. That was good. That was a really good hit. Don't flow. Don't flow. And of course she flows. Of course she does. At the point where we really didn't need her to, she does. And now she's going to get all her fucking health back and kill fucking me. Great. That S field is pissing me off so much. Yes! Kill her! Yes! Did we just beat a Reaper? Of course not. That was only the warm-up round. Warm-up round? Yeah, you're not strong enough to face us both. Don't disappoint me and run away. I will find you eventually. The Reaper retreats down the halls. Well, that was interesting. I guess she's uh, gonna be back when we get to the end of whatever this place is. Do you think that dope was being serious about that room before? Maybe. Did we pass by that room earlier? Maybe we did, I can't quite remember. Also, you said the goat was affected by the abyss? Yeah, certain traits become prominent in those who stay in the abyss too long. Or close to reality seen when the abyss is leaking through. Which is all the more reason to close it. Could, could we potentially be influenced by the abyss? No, my power will protect all of you. But it's not somewhere you should visit if you can help it. It's so, uh, captured. Fantastic. The water right has disappeared. So that's what the switches did. There you go. New areas opened up. Clearing out this floor really fucking quick today. Well, it's going pretty well. Okay. Two strong presences behind this door. I think you can guess who they are. When you talked about the abyss, I wasn't expecting there to be normal looking people from it. They only look normal. Reapers are terrifying and powerful opponents. Anyone who makes a deal with the abyssal powers and breaks the terms of their contract, the Reapers are the ones to collect their debt. Shouldn't Anubis do something about that? Why would she? Anyone who consults with dark powers are left to their own fate. Unless they are so strong they're not even the Reapers of the Asylum, Abyss can make them bow. If the Lord has Reapers working for her, then she must be stopped right now. You seem worried when I mention Reapers. Well, there are some stories I've heard about adventurers who had met Reapers. They're practically mythical creatures, but even the strongest of adventurers rarely survive an encounter with one. It's a child's story that, will, that if you do not behave, the Reapers will come for you. Needless to say, humans everywhere tremble at the idea of meeting a Reaper. And I'm about to face two of them at once. Their forest is strong, but I, we will prevail, I'm certain of this. Reapers or not, we cannot falter before them. Their strength, no matter how terrible it is, cannot extinguish our light. Gary, you're not the only one who's scared. Sylvie sighs. Despite everything, I'd rather see you make it out of here alive. I care about you too. I wasn't expecting to hear that from you. Shut up, just enjoy it for what it is, okay? I've seen worse. You're gonna be fine, Sari. Me gives a reassuring smile. You're gonna go on many more adventures yet. I'll make sure of it. Let's go inside, shall we, and see how bad it is. So here they are. So you're saying they managed to beat you? Don't put it like that. I was holding back. This time with two of us together, there's no way they could win. I see. Well then, I shall grant you the mercy of my scythe. Face the Reaper Twins, foolish creatures, and know the terrible power of the Abyss. One step, one strike, one block at a time. Sarah repeats that to herself under her breath. I can do this, it's just a little bit further. Put my hand on her shoulder. Relax. We'll be able to beat them. Have faith in me as I have faith in you. Well, that's a great start. Still be getting absolutely fucking wrecked and leveling up. Fantastic. This is not going to go well, is it? Well, at least I hit both of them, but that hit in itself was crazy. 
I wish I had more holy spells, or spells with holes in them, that would be great. So we're back in town, those, those were, that was just like, almost impossible. Creature of the Abyss are not to be trusted, a goat has always been a creature, it's been associated with the Abyss as well. As it was often an animal offered in sacrifice with making packs with dark forces. However, the goat in my holding cell is an odd one, and I'm not really sure how I should approach her. Goats can be some of the most stubborn animals in existence. So how does a goat get wings like that? Perhaps due to exposure to a realm which no one should be treading in? She raises her spectacles to look at me. It's my business to go wherever the realm so please me. And do not make presumptions about me based on the fact I'm a goat. The abyss really has changed you. And how is that any of your business? Honestly, people are so rude these days. Apparently goats cannot enjoy the finer things in life without others ridiculing them. Anyways, my newfound intelligence would let me observe. You must have a reason for keeping me here. Pray tell me what that may be. I'm always looking for people who can assist me in my quest. I desire to take this dungeon for my own. So would you be willing to join me? And what do you have to offer me that the Dungeon Lord cannot? Well, your freedom to begin with. And being well cared for? The Dungeon Lord obviously does not care about her subordinates if she lets this happen to them. I'm sure we could find pursuits which are appropriately stimulating for you as well. Intriguing offer. Very well, I could use a change of scenery. There we go, the Goat Girls joined our party. What level's the Goat Girl? She's level 50. Exalted Angel, you're gone. Abyssal Goat, you're in. So we're going in the room that was mentioned um, by uh, the goat girl. I don't know how much this I'm going to show, but let's have a look anyway. Oh, uh, finally, a human showed up. So you heard about our offer? W well, I was just thinking, could it be possible to get a reward for this? If I get a powerful item, then I will do it. Do not waste the force if you don't want to, Sari. No, it's okay. I understand why this is necessary. Jesus Christ! So, goat, you may have me. Sari is practically tackled out of the room. Hey, not so rough! And, uh, that's all we're showing. So basically, we picked up the Ryu in some scenes that I really can't show even edited. Um, we had to offer Meeve up uh, to spend some time with Ryu uh, in order to get her to join the party, and she has, and they did. And Meeve's stats have increased and she's got a new ability and shit, so I guess that's good. And, uh, we now have... The Ryu, who is level 51, to join the party, who is now amongst our highest level fit characters. Yumi's actually with the lowest level in the room now. That's pretty cool though, we got a bunch done in this video, I hope you enjoyed. Next time we'll take on Emma and Ella properly after some grinding, and uh, hopefully we'll have a pretty successful fight against them eventually again. Um, otherwise I hope you enjoyed the video, if you do leave a like, consider supporting me on Gamers if you like my content, it's like Patreon, hit the link in the description right now. You can also get my new anime streams themed shirts by hitting the link in the description too. You guys have a great day. See you later. Bye! <laughs> Oh, my banana missed! <laughs> that was anticlimactic, that turn, guys, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I have a full power, though, I can't.